Hi. Oh, yes. Hello. Welcome. <laughs> I'm deranged. <laughs> hey, she finally wow. said it. Yeah, she finally said it. Okay. <laughs> okay. Um, hi, welcome to Unglamorous Truths with the Downtown Girls. This is a podcast where we talk about uh, making it come hell or high water. I'm Emmett. I'm Crystal. I'm Chandra. Welcome to the show. Okay. First question, little icebreaker situation. I want to ask, like, what is your most impressive, like, self-sufficient skill? Like, something that you've learned that perhaps you used to outsource, but now you've gotten really good at it. Um, I'll start. I can do my own Brazilian waxes. (laughs) Yeah. And she can do others. (laughs) Yes. (laughs) I'm a full-fledged, like, what are they called? Uh, 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 oh, yes, I am that. I can go from front to back. Um, Damn. Get it good, get it clean, and how you you be like? <laughs> yeah, I put, I'm I lifting put my leg for those. My you can't leg see. on my uh, on my count on my bathroom sink, <laughs> and I just rip away. Oh, oh uh, saves me saves me lots of money. Yeah, I learned it in the pandemic because obviously. The girlies weren't out here providing these services, and I needed these services. So I was like, oh, let me click, clack, find a little website that sells wax and get to experimenting. Mm -hmm. And it actually worked out for me. Yeah. And so people know she uses sugar wax Mm -hmm. because it's different. Mm -hmm. So sugar, I think, works. I like sugaring. Mm -hmm. You put me on to sugaring now. I really like it. It's super simple. And then, like, instead of, like, the strips, Mm -hmm. these little, like, pretty much they they look like credit cards. And you just flick. Mm Mm-hmm. My flick great. My flick game is strong. It is. It is. She's very good. Well, what can you do? Um, well, far left turn from that. Um, <laughs> mine is not a bodily function. It's a mm-hmm. just for the business. I edit uh, for my career and uh, for others as well. You back in the day, uh, I have given up. But um, but that what I mean by that is um, shout out to middle school because I went to a school where they taught us how to edit and use um, uh, Final Cut and iMovie. And that was back in the very use. Yeah. Mm. 2000 and what? Four or two? Oh, wow. Learning how to do this back then? That was unheard of. And it changed my life because I have a brain for it. Um, I really enjoy editing when it's my choice. (laughs) Not under extreme pressure, but just like the precision, like, I really, like, enjoy. Literally going to college and, like, needing to do a- my own actor's reel. And then even that was my little side hustle. Like, mm-hmm. right out of college, I had final take reels. And I did them for other people. Yes. Yeah, yes, mm-hmm. very good. Mm-hmm. Um, so, I I really can do nails. Hey, I, I really can. Hey. Now, don't, don't let my nails right now. I saw you look down. Don't let these be an indication <laughs> of my abilities. Because, um... I do have a three-year-old and a five-month-old, and that's not really a priority right now. So, right. you know, just the fact that they're alive, the nails, it's that's it. Uh-huh. But, um, no, I really can. Like, I can do acrylics and everything. But, um, and recently I, like, painted my own, did my own, you know, uh, press-ons. I did galaxy nails, and they're so pretty. But, yeah, particularly, I can do some very nice designs. Mm. And I do enjoy it. And I used to do one as a high school, and they were always so cute. Um but yeah, I, I can if if I have to. Mm-hmm. I can. It just takes like a lot of time. So mm-hmm. I will be working my appointment. Yeah, I mean, yeah. sounds Nails like there's by a... Ariel. I can. Yeah, I can do. That. <laughs> yes, <laughs> I can do. That. I sounds can do like that. a spa needs to happen in the future, guys. I know, right? I'll do the the editing for, <laughs> Wait, what, for the what, footage. What, what, what you edited? Okay, we're gonna, the, okay. The nails. That's fair. That's fair. Mm-hmm. <laughs> All right. Well, coming into this episode with the topic being like the difficulty of breaking into um, an industry without any connections, nepotism, and the benefits benefits of like working with family and friends um i wanted to kick it off with like a nice little conversation about what it was like in the very beginning of our careers the crazy things that we did to try to network and build relationships with people like i remember when we you and i first moved to la chandra how fucking hard it was to get unpaid internships like to this Buddy. day, I resent that experience <laughs> so much, and I laugh at it because it's like, nigga, I couldn't even get a free job. Yeah, yeah, like, yeah. A free job. Yeah. I remember once I came, I went to an interview. Um, it was on Sepulveda, like in that in the complex where the arc light yep. is. Mm-hmm. 
Um, and I mean, it was, I had, I'm like 48 hours in LA or some shit like mm. that. Like I didn't know anything. I didn't under, I didn't know that I had to give myself at least 20 minutes to get through that complex. Mm. So I was late. Those women ate me up in that room. It was like, you are late to your first interview and i'm like ladies it's a fucking free intern like y'all need to calm down right. like what is this you're reprimanding me obviously i didn't get the internship guys but like <laughs> oh yeah 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 Th- those were savage times i remember um when we lived in north hollywood on albert street i walked because i didn't have a car yet i walked to an interview and it's the valley in la which is extremely hot. Right. Mm-hmm. So I was like sweating after my two mile walk. And so oh I like God. get in there. I'm mad gross. And it was for like an independent film festival to be like an assistant. It was unpaid, you know, whatever. I thought I killed that thing. I was like, I just know I'm getting this. Mm. Boy, me and this man, we laughing. We kick in. You know, that motherfucker did not give me that internship. I was so tight. And... At the time, he, it just he, felt like, he like he wrote a note. Damn. He was like, "She was sweaty." I think like, so. How do, the audacity <laughs> to be? So, I mean, good for them, I guess, to be so fucking picky with free labor. But like, like we were getting rejections as if yeah. these were like salaried positions. Yeah. Yes. Well, the funny thing yeah. is, is that a lot of those types of internships, um, they're all about prestige, and um, usually the people that can afford them are people that already come from money. Mm. Like, the whole point of doing those internships for those people are like, okay, mom and dad are covering everything, so let me go climb the ladder and, like, go work on this and that. And it's like, well, that's not helpful if I don't have any money, bro. Like, Mm -hmm. this is, like, what am I supposed to do? Mm -hmm. Right. (laughs) And about that, and that just made me think of with that internship that I didn't get, because I did end up getting another one, but for some reason, I really wanted that one because the space was so chill and that one every day you was going to get lunch Mm -hmm. um, with the other one only sometimes. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I needed that lunch. But when he, you know, rejected me, he was like that, um, he, he, he was prefacing people who had film degree Mm. and I'm like, okay, well, what happened to just work your way on up? You know, like, right. I have a BFA in theater. Is that right. close enough? Sir. Right. Like, how dare you? Dude. And then when we finally did get these internships, like, they worked us like it was real nine to five. Like, I remember, like, going to my internship in the morning and, like, being in L.A. 405 traffic. Mm. And I'm like, I'm doing this for free. Like, literally two hours each way because it was, like, yeah. peak and this is, you know, pre-pandemic. This is when mm-hmm. L.A. traffic was at its peak. I mean, I took a train mm-hmm. to a bus to a bus. It's mm-hmm. a call to get to my internship. And then after to get to my job, I had to take a bus to a bus mm-hmm. and then walk. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Hours and on public transit in Los Angeles. <laughs> Remember, I worked for this producer who who actually had like a, a, a hoarding problem, like an actual, I think, like diagnosed problem. Um, oh yeah no yeah no yeah was, i knew i knew when she started was, the sentence yeah it was very serious oh. the whole point of the internship was to manage her hoarding because yeah. like her house was filled up with things mm-hmm. the offices were filled up with with boxes of mm-hmm. like call logs i i had access to call logs from like the early 90s like that i could literally like so-and-so called you on september 4th 1990 i'm like why is this That's in my crazy. hand you yeah. know like this belongs in staples as brand new paper like this should have been recycled right 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 and turned into something else like yeah. it should not be in my hand yeah. yeah and like transporting this old log from the office to her home yeah like, this this was my job yeah. and then getting free lunch in between that and i remember like the end of that for me was being on the 405 back home again stuck in traffic to the point where you just put your car in park i scream cried <laughs> middle of the nothing like a good one i can one. hear it nothing Scream like a good one mm-hmm. with sade playing in the background it was <laughs> it was so hilarious like i look back and i laugh at myself like oh my god bitch that was that was so pathetic like <laughs> i scream crying on the floor i was like i can't do this anymore Mm-mm, not yeah for free. but also what's unfortunate about that is like all right on one hand you're doing free labor but you're also not even learning anything like right doing that like the internship that i eventually got i did actually learn a lot like Mm -hmm. i learned about pitching Mm -hmm. i learned about putting together decks Mm -hmm. like they really because it was just like 
it was the whole company was three guys. You know, one guy was like the famous dude, so he wasn't really in the day to day operations. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Then it was you know just the two guys there every day. They were like at the time they seemed adult to me, but like in in retrospect, I think they were younger than I am now. Mm. And oh. It makes sense because they just sometimes do some stuff like like young, like, you know, be coming in hung over, you know, from Coachella. They was, you know, fucked up, mm-hmm. <laughs> um, but they were really cool. They were like nice, mm-hmm. nice dudes. So they really did give me a lot of like creative control. And so like that I thought was useful, but it did, mm-hmm. it did get to a point where it was like, you know, you're like, I just I can't really be doing this type mm-hmm. of work for free mm-hmm. like after a while. And that's mm-hmm. the weird part too about L.A. is like whether it's an internship or a job. I feel like L.A., there are such levels of extreme wealth. That, like, sometimes it's just rich people that are bored Mm. or, like, have weird problems and are like, oh, let me throw either a little bit of money at this or let me just come up, invent this title and then and then look for someone to fill it. Right. And so you can end up in out of depth experiences where it's like, this isn't even real, bro. Like, this is not this is a psycho that has money that is just like, I invented this. Do it. So you have you to check who, yourself. You never know who are real players in the game. Right. Now, mm-hmm. that person you work for is actually a real player in the game, mm-hmm. but is crazy. Yes. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? But you do sometimes <laughs> end up, you, you don't know, working know. for somebody and you like dead, like, uh, like one of my girls from college, who's a casting director, Taylor says, she's like, she's like, that guy's not in the biz. <laughs> that guy ain't never been in the biz. You don't realize that. And so, oh, you like, this fool was never even in the biz, yeah. bro. You could, there was nothing you could do for me you Real. know Real. Uh, <laughs> that is the hard part about like co- going into an industry that doesn't necessarily have positions on linkedin or in mm-hmm. like you're not finding these jobs on what careerbuilder.com or whatever the hell uh mm-hmm. zip recruiter these jobs don't exist there and so mm-hmm. it's if it's all word of mouth it's all connections and so like coming in it was really, really hard and frustrating to, to figure out, like, where do I even start? And uh, as actors, a lot of it is, like, the pay-to-play situations. Mm-hmm. And, like, if I go back and, like, actually calculate how much money I invested in pay-to-play, I mean, it's a part of the game. It's, you know, I don't know about now. I don't know if it's still a thing now. Mm-hmm. And I probably think the government has, like, clamped down on that shit. Yeah. But at that time, it yeah. was, like, yeah, like if you're serious, yeah. then yeah, you need to run a credit card up. Yep, because you first got to pay for the headshots. And I know headshots now, you know, you can get your friends to take them and they're yeah. viable. But like mm. at that time, you had to pay, you know, $700, $800. Absolutely. Um, the people who were going to the cobblestone lady were the paying over a thousand. The cobblestone street. Everybody lady. knows cobblestone this cobblestone, cobblestone street in New York, okay? Yeah. Cobblestone. <laughs> I think, what was it? And if you're from a certain generation, you know about you the, know cobblestone. the cobblestone. Shots with the cobblestone in the background. <laughs> yes. And that was, that was like the then. sign. Right. <laughs> but it would make you feel... <laughs> Yep, just you knew. The, yes, the yep. You know the exact <laughs> what pose. Damn, they was making money. Yeah, and making so much, and that was yeah. a sign of how serious you were. Because yep. when people would look, they'd be like, "Oh, oh, you got the cobblestones." Mm-hmm. You know, like this is a good price point. Yeah, you, you we, we never had the cobblestones. We had no. sidewalk. You know, so we did try. We did get our <laughs> sidewalk photos. But you had that, and then okay, you want to meet casting directors? Got to pay for a class. Mm-hmm. You want to meet agents? Got to pay for a class. Yeah, you know, you want feedback? Oh, you got to pay more for feedback now. Now mm-hmm. I can't be telling you stuff you don't pay. You just first the first amount you just paid is just for me to see you. Yep. But you want me to tell you about yourself? Yeah. And you know what? I would I would always be rubbed the wrong way when I'd pay for these classes and they'd say like, you know, getting their contact information is not required. And I'm like, so what the hell am I paying for? Like, I'm paying to meet and build relationships. Mm-hmm. The very least you can do for my eight hundred dollars is give me a damn email address. If you don't want to open the email, that's on you. But give me the damn email right. address. Take a big one, baby. Yeah. Take a big one. Just give me something to feel good. No, that's true. All that money. Yeah, I do think that now in hindsight, I'm like, damn. Some of this was legitimate for sure, but some of it was like, oh, people was just getting like they pocket slime. Yeah. Like it was really just yeah. like certain certain people were like, oh, that's a cute little like hustle. I'll show up, you know, but then but then there were times I told you like the Gersh, you know, the guy Gersh where, you know, I think he genuinely was interested in making a connection. You know, unfortunately, I crazed up and, mm-hmm. and destroyed that. But like but I think, you know, it, it really just depends on the person. I think some people are genuinely there to discover yeah. new talent. And they're and you like know. we have friends who have had things happen from you know those classes mm-hmm. and like benefits and I, I think the casting director ones 
Well, you know, they probably all have their value, but the casting director ones, like, yeah, I think when they like you, like, I've yeah. seen it really work out. Yeah, for it, it, that is the most mm-hmm. valuable. Unfortunately, no, nobody ever gave you an amount of me, but I'm happy mm-hmm. for my friends who, you know. Yeah, I've definitely gotten called in mm-hmm. by casting directors whose classes I've taken, yeah. and, like, if I didn't, when I didn't have an agent, they would call me in personally. Yeah. yeah, and I'm yeah. like, okay. Oh, my God, a casting director definitely did give me... Yeah. That agent in LA. Now that agent they they did you know only give me one audition in a year and then fired me as you guys know after I didn't get that double Dutch audition. But mm-hmm. no, I didn't get that job. But mm-hmm. No, yeah, casting director did. Oh yeah. How much of that do you feel like lend itself to you actually breaking in? Because I feel like the real opportunities came through our own hustle of our web series. Mm-hmm. Like, mm, if yeah. we just would have stayed, like, the uh, pay-to-play route, mm-hmm. I'm not certain what our careers would have looked like. And not to say that it there isn't, I'm, sh- there's a, I'm sure there mm-hmm. are lots of success stories. And if you're one of them, please, you know, drop a comment, let me know, enlighten me. Because yeah. I, would, I would love to reframe yeah. my thinking on that experience. Yeah, and I want to know who class y'all took. I'm going to go take that class mm-hmm. if they out here hanging and get, giving jobs on them. I do feel like, you know... Also, sometimes, like, because we have a friend that used, kind of did the, the most traditional route of just acting. I mean, mm. Siobhan, like, yeah. literally, and excelled at that. Like, yeah. she did stay in the trenches with building relationships with casting directors and, like, certain reps and, like, really staying in the mix. And I really do feel like sometimes also the universe just knows what's for you because of where your heart lies. Because I do feel like she was like, I'm not a creator in this way that, we, that y'all are. Mm-hmm. I'm going to go do this. And because that was such a priority for her, Mm -hmm. it got her full attention. And I feel like because we are clearly creators, you know, I'll speak for myself. It was kind of like that was also in a time where I told you all about this the other day. Like I was doing all the things. I was doing so many things. I was juggling musical theater auditions and dance calls and, Mm -hmm. and trying to meet CDs and like trying to figure out how to act and like headshots. And it's just like sometimes it's just so overwhelming Mm -hmm. that am I doing any of this well? Yeah. yeah yeah you know yeah and there's yeah. there's some respect to I, f- I respect that you know our friend was like i'm d- gonna do this yeah and i'm gonna do this really well and she did that mm-hmm. makes me woo. i am yeah. always so impressed at how m- much she stays booking you know without the connection the insider connections especially back in you know our 20s well for me personally i don't i don't think i would be here if i had just um been no. waiting for that at all like i think i would have uh probably re- Moved back home by now. I don't know. Retired. Maybe just been a housewife. I don't know. Maybe worked at the bank. You guys know how I feel about working at the bank, baby. Good job. Um, yeah, for sure. Because not because none of that. Like not a single showcase I did. Like mm. nothing ever led to anything that was heavily fruitful. Yeah. You know, maybe they were small s- steps. Mm-hmm. But no, no. The only thing was the self creating mm-hmm. um and in the network mm-hmm. yeah mm-hmm. and then like what about like the referrals asking for referrals and cold emailing like what has been your experience with that cuz i you know i'm i could ask i'm i'm not shy about asking somebody for a specific like referral um if if it's something that i know that like I can back it up. Like, I'm not just out here wildly like, oh, can you connect me to Natalie Portman? Or I don't know. I literally mm-hmm. just pulled that out of my ass. Like, mm-hmm. that never happened. <laughs> but, but like, like what, what business do I have with her, right? It's like, I'm like, hey, I want to meet this person because X, Y, and Z. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Um, and like, really grateful and, and surprised at how people show up. Mm-hmm. Yeah. They're like, absolutely, yes. Yeah. Um, and, and put you on an email with somebody. Mm-hmm. And even if it, if it lands to just like a zoom like that is to me like okay that's a successful like yeah. outreach yeah absolutely i mean i'm i'm a huge fan of the um the email you know and uh in my 20s i was you know very strong with it i think i had a list serf of people um from nyu people connections i made Random people I met from certain events. I think when I did UCB, I did their sketch writing class. I did their improv class. Mm -hmm. I put all these people on a list, on a Google email list. And I would quarterly email them with updates. Mm -hmm. Um, And I would say, hey, this is what I'm working on right now. I'm looking for this or I'm seeking this. And every time I would get what I needed. 
every time I sent that email out to about, it's about 400 people. Wow. I would get, yeah, I would get people being like, oh my God, so good to hear from you. Also, you needed this? Okay, let me connect you with so-and-so. Mm. And so, yeah, uh, that, that should work for me. Like, even when I came back from Germany, I was like, I manifested my job. Like, I was the exact job I wanted. I was like, look, I'm back. <laughs> Here's a photo of me with the chancellor of germany um, you did do that you would put yeah. photos in yeah i was emails. i was like i backed it up i was like this is what i'm legit so uh but this is what i need and when i came back i was like i am now looking for a job because before germany and after germany woof, my peace it was different because before i was in new york taking that d train and taking that four train from deep in brooklyn to the upper east side to go to work at an espresso mm-hmm <laughs> And that was an hour and a half train one way. So I was on that train three hours a day. And I was like, I can't, I can't do this anymore. So like literally when I came back, I was like, I would like to work remotely or I would like a job that has extreme flexibility where it's like 15 to 20 minutes from where I live in Flatbush. So if anybody knows of anything, let me know. And a friend of ours was like, I'm leaving my job at program manager of this really cool black arts incubator in Brooklyn. Do you want to take the position for me? She was like, Shay is literally looking for a referral from me. She was like, I'll just plug you straight in. And that was incredible. Like, so it works. And I think it was also full circle because that's Zosha's mom, right? Yeah. And so that's also another <gasps> level of connection and of like, sh- you went to school with my daughter. Yes. Or, yes, of course. And like, I feel like a lot of the opportunities that we got in our career was because of these like little connections. Little it's like, connections. oh, you know, so-and-so. Yeah, absolutely. Yes. And then even more full circle, because I worked for her, another Virgo, love you, Shay. She plugged us later because when she found out I was moving to LA, she connected us to Waco um, because she knew kind of the Waco Theater Arts Center, Miss Knowles, and was like, oh, you guys need to get in with them, like, be on a panel. I'm just going to tell them you're, you need to be on the panel. And then now we have that relationship over there where mm-hmm. they've extended invitations to us over the last few years. Like, you know, so it's like you just never know. Yeah. Yeah. Little by little over the years, we we were able to build our network to what it is now through our, our personal relationships from, from NYU, through people that we've met, in the industry, just, you know, sporadically, honestly, at restaurants, at events, and then to, like, when agents would send us out on generals. Mm-hmm. And if you don't know what a general is, it's a it's an industry first date. That's yeah. how I like to yeah. call it. <laughs> yeah, I always call them play dates, but I guess because yeah. I'm a mom, I call them play dates, yeah. <laughs> industry first date. Because it's like, yeah, people put you together. When you meet somebody. Figure out, figure out what y'all yeah. are talking about. And so, like... <laughs> Then they're now in your Rolodex and you can be like, oh, yeah, yeah, I know that person. I had a general with them. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So now that's in your back pocket. Mm -hmm. So, like, let's kind of transition into talking about, like, now us getting to the position of, like, working with, you know, people that we know and how much that, like, drastically changed the course of our careers. Um, How does that feel for you? You looking dead at me because um, I work with my husband. Yes, <laughs> is that, is that what this is? yes. <laughs> yes. Um, like to, I, like and like the juxtap- is it the juxtaposition or just like the difference the between contrast. the contrast of of working with someone that you know and trust versus pure just like industry contact. Yeah. Um. I mean, I, I love it. I love it. It it's so it's so fun, but it's also it's so safe, and mm. it's like um, I feel like it grew me, and it got the best out of me to have somebody who genuinely wants the best for me and out of me pushing me. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, sometimes it could be um, exhaustive, but it really in the best way because. You know, in, in dealing with and working with Bashir, who is my husband, who is a tremendous talent, he knows my ability so well. Sometimes sometimes he can see it better than I can see mm-hmm. it. And so he will push, mm-hmm. you know, and push and push. You know, that's why I, sometimes I don't even like to tape auditions for him because he's going to be like, that's not it. Do it again. You know, I'm taping an audition day. I bet you we tape for two hours. Mm-hmm. <laughs> that's not it. Nope. Do it again. But it's it's made me better and stronger. Yeah, and I just think when you can work with people you know, like, 
it's also it's fun Mm -hmm. right like it's it's the dream Mm -hmm. um you know like when we were doing south side because you know it's my husband myself it's also a lot of his siblings Mm -hmm. it's also a lot of our close family friends you know people we grew up with people that i went to high school with on that show like um it's very very familial and when we would have guest stars come they'd be like you guys do not know how lucky you are and how special this is that like you guys all get to do this together like Mm -hmm. it's the right it's the dream to be you know working like having fun with your family and friends getting bread Mm -hmm. with your family and friends you know everyone everyone eating everyone eating absolutely um so yeah it's the uh, yeah i love it i love it the the genuine support is like is nice Mm -hmm. we say this all the time but you know advocates for black nepotism like i really feel like that needs to be you know Hi, 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 hi. Everyone it's, else it's does it. It's different. I just mm-hmm. see it different as like the legacy nepotism, nepo babies. Right. But I feel like that's every, like, mm-hmm. that's everything. Like, I know, you know, the the nepo baby thing is, that's a whole nother discussion. But like, you want to be a bottle girl, right? It helps to already know a girl working at the club, mm-hmm. you know? <laughs> like, most things work come like through that. who you know yeah most mm-hmm. things work like that like a lot of people like referral there's trust in referrals mm-hmm. right you know and sometimes referrals go left but a lot of times they they go well like that's mm-hmm. normal i just think in our industry you know it's just such a it's such a big thing because there's so few spots you yeah. know the, because that's the way they keep it and it's sometimes angering because these people are already hella rich mm-hmm. right you know and it's like they just get more money, you know, mm-hmm. make some make some space, mm-hmm. you know, for some people to move up. But I think for black people, I think we have to employ nepotism. Like, I, I don't think we can move forward with that mind state. You no, know, my kids going to get it out the mud for what? Right. Mm-hmm. What did you get it out the mud for? Right. right. Why? Why? It, Why? That Fresh Prince episode. Do y'all remember this uh, uh, where uh. Um, Will got a job playing a pirate at a restaurant? Oh. <laughs> <laughs> It was a pirate, right? Yeah. 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 Yep. And <laughs> Uncle Phil was like, I could basically, whatever you're trying to work to get the money for, like, I can do it for you. And Will was just so like, no, I want to do it by myself. And Uncle Phil was just like, but like, then what am I here for? Yeah. What's the point? Right. You're, it's not like you're not ready. And I think that's where a lot of the frustration with nepotism comes from is like the perception that people that are not mm-hmm. ready for the mm-hmm. opportunity are, are getting it and essentially being allowed to fail up. Right. Yeah. And some people do. For sure. Sure. Mm-hmm. But like we have to understand, we don't have to understand, but it would behoove us to understand the benefit and also the logic behind it of like, this is an industry where you're constantly changing Mm -hmm. crews, right? Mm -hmm. And the the deadlines are are coming at you fast. Mm -hmm. So if you have the choice between someone that you know can get the job done and then a stranger, naturally you're going to go with the person that you know. Mm -hmm. And that is kind of how this boys club has been built because people just stick to who they know. Mm -hmm. Because it's like, I don't have that much time to train and I don't know the way that you're going to produce the work that I need. And I know for a fact, she's going to get it done. Absolutely. Right. Right. Absolutely. But I, when it all looked like white men, right. then it's just like, no, that's co- the issue, y'all, baby. Need to, y'all need to fix this. Yeah. Yeah. yeah but, but some, like, sometimes I think you have to do it like that way. Like you have to pull people because they won't break through any other way. Yeah. You yeah. know, like, I don't know. I mean, who, who, I can't say, right. Because I did South side or whatever. But I will say it was very hard for people to see my talent for what it is before that. Mm-hmm. Exactly. You know, I will. I will say that mm-hmm. it was. Uh, yeah, it was. You it, needed it the felt opportunity. Yep. Mm-hmm. And if it wasn't for Bashir giving you that opportunity, who knows mm-hmm. when it would have came? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Exactly. And now everyone's like, so, "Oh my God, I love her! Right, so funny! Right, right. She's always been funny. You've always been funny. Yeah. You just needed a platform." Yeah. yeah, and by the grace of God, your husband gave it to you. Yeah. Absolutely. And now, how many people out there are are without that opportunity because they don't have that? Right. right, right. And I think that's I think that can be the hardest part, especially in this business period. Speaking of what you were saying about working with people that know you and care about you and want to push you, is when you are just doing it raw dog and just full blown on your own, like outside of your network and your people and that intimacy. That sh- daily struggle to just be seen. Yes. yes. For people to just get it. And it's like, but but you don't get it. And that's so angering because it's like, 
I know I'm fucking special. Mm-hmm. Like, I know I have gifts. My friends know I have gifts. I know you have gifts. I know you have gifts. But when you go out in the world and you just have to constantly be in spaces with newness and mm-hmm. other energy and people can very quickly just decide to, I mean, they don't, uh, to be fair, they don't know you. So it's like, yeah. maybe they just don't see you. Mm-hmm. But it's like, damn, how can I be seen in this mm-hmm. world as yeah. the artist that I am? Yeah. Like, yeah. how can my gifts be affirmed and nurtured? Yes. And yeah. It's very difficult in this industry. I, I mean, and I think we kind of supplement it with like those programs, diversity programs, um, where they're like seeking out, you know, up and coming talent. Yeah. Um, but even that is kind of like a crapshoot because thousands of people are applying for like a dozen spots. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. And the in, in, in truth, sometimes the intentions behind that can be tricky, right? Like you get it, and people, you know, want to constantly remind you that you're a diversity hire. Oh you know? my god! Oh my god. Yeah, um, <laughs> you know, and find small ways to do that and right. to negate your contribution. You know, right. because they don't understand you and they don't see you, and that's why I think black nepotism is so key because we need to be in spaces with people who understand us and who are not trying to dominate us, who who are not going to be asking questions like, "Oh, is this a is this really a thing?" You know, when you say. Uh, a black version of this is a thing you know let's go something with that the world knows but black hair is a thing Mm. and you know then you have somebody is this really a thing like i don't want to be in these conversations yeah that's why you know Mm. you have to be supporting each other like especially when you're in a when you're in a position to turn around and put your hand back absolutely absolutely you you have to for the safety of those coming up i remember when i first left nyu i had kind of like a I got upset because um, I had been in this show for three or four years, the reality show, um, every summer, uh, which was like a NYU thing. It was with one of my greatest muses, Liz Waitos was the director, incredible woman. Um, and I, I feel like that was really my training more than the school itself, mm-hmm. like the, the what I did in the, my semesters. Mm-hmm. Um really learned how to devise your own work, create your own work from the scratch and like empower yourself to believe that it is, you know, um, valid and worthy. Um, and, um, at the end of one of those summers, I remember someone else in the cast was was like, Oh, I'm going to make an improv team. Um, does anybody want to join, join me? Right. So obviously we're really tight knit in that cast. Like it's usually the same people every year. So I was like, Oh, I would love to, you know, audition for that. That would be awesome. Um, and I learned the hard way that people work with their friends and who they like. Yes. And I was worthy of being in that group, but I was not close to that person compared to other people Mm -hmm. in the group. And he hired (laughs) all so many other people in the group it felt like i it was just me being excluded and i felt like i really was like oh wow wow like and it was so painful because i was like damn i'm like i'm worth being in this group but now in hindsight i'm like thank god Mm -hmm. because that wasn't the community for me yeah Mm -hmm. and those people continue to hold each other down they have their community right it's like a comedy crew in new york Mm -hmm. but it's like my community was y'all and if i had taking up the real estate of trying to do that and do all the things we were working on that that was low-key god's protection he was like nah your time is valuable like you gotta just pour into what y'all got going on Mm -hmm. and don't try to do this 24 7 yeah Mm -hmm. and sometimes it's not your community and also sometimes you're not ready Mm. right because i remember i've never expressed this but i remember when um you know bashir and diallo diallo is uh bashir's writing partner phenomenally talented man as well and when they were doing their first pilot at hbo right and you know hey you've been struggling for years wanting to get on like i'm not i'm not the one to at the time for sure even less am i the one to ask you know at that time it was like no 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 i don't ask for shit okay i I get everything on my own but like yeah definitely on the insides i was like oh just, I hope this man throws me something, you know, like <laughs> I just want something because at that point I'd had nothing mm-hmm. and I needed, I needed something to let me know I was in the right path. Mm-hmm. I needed a validation and you know, it did not happen. I did not get asked to do a damn thing. You know, I, I remember I flew down to Atlanta. I like watched them mm-hmm. shooting and stuff. And I just like wanted, I couldn't, I was like, Oh God, one day, one day this will be me. Like, I mm-hmm. can't wait. Um, but 
honestly, had I got something at that time, mm. I was not ready. Mm. I know that. I know that I was not ready. My talent was not there simply because the confidence in my talent was not there. Ooh. You know? So it really it wasn't for me. And mm-hmm. if I'd have got it, I'd have blown it. Mm-hmm. I'd have blown it. Because mm-hmm. sometimes you 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 know if, depending on your nepotism situation, sometimes you get a lot of shots and you do get to fail mm-hmm. up. Mm-hmm. But a lot of us don't, especially when you're looking like us. Mm-hmm. You don't get all that failing up shit. Mm-hmm. So when you get your shot, it got to go. Mm-hmm. It got to go in. And I, 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 I know I can say with confidence it would not have gone in. Mm-hmm. I would have fumbled. Mm-hmm. I would have fumbled because I wasn't, I wasn't ready. Mm-hmm. You know, so sometimes, you know, uh, was it man's rejection is God's protection? Mm-hmm. Yes, yes. You know? Mm-hmm. Yes. I mean, there's also an argument um, that I hear um, on the Internet about, like, black people are allowed to be mediocre as well. And, like, black people are allowed to fail up. But, and b- black people don't always have to be excellent um, because the 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 bar is set so much higher mm-hmm. for black people than it is for white people. Girl, I love that. I don't know if that's how the world is working, but I'm glad we're putting that into the world. Um because also everybody be, a, you know, your little booty at first, right? Like mm-hmm. what? That's what, you know, the the problem is there's like no development anymore. And so like there's an expectation right. that everyone comes ready yeah. in all facets. There's yes. no more building. Right. So it's that's a lot of pressure kind of to put on yourself to think that like you must you must nail that shot on your first try. Right. Yeah. When you're 20. Or 22. Like, yeah. it's like, where's there room for growth? Like, right. And I think about, in that conversation, like, I think about Cardi. And so, some of that, too, is, like, how you're built and how you're going to move in the world. Because, you know, you think about Cardi B and you think about her journey. And she was putting out those mixtapes. She was making them songs about the weave and the whatever. And she had that blood and heavy video. But, like... The music then is not where the music is now. And, like, mm-hmm. people were clowning her, mm-hmm. shitting on her stuff. Like, this is just a stripper. You know, she's just a funny stripper. And clearly she saw more in herself. Mm-hmm. And, like, the music got better and better and better. And, like, now, look at her. This, this is the viable. Mm-hmm. You know, the music, it bangs. It thumps. And it wasn't like the music was so booty, booty, butt cheeks in the beginning. But it wasn't, like it wasn't great you know what i'm saying mm-hmm. and i think she would say that herself mm-hmm. so some of it too is like can you take it and continue to get up which i think you have to be able to do you know to give yourself that space to grow and because yeah other people will try not to give you that space you know they'll Absolutely try to not. do because you're a representation of an entire group of people when it's like no i'm just i'm here i'm just representing me babe yeah I'm doing the best yeah. I can with what I got. Absolutely. Well, I say that all the time. No, 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 no. I want to speak for her. I want to speak for him. Mm-hmm. I, I for get me. it. Yes. Like, you know, there's generally only one that represents the masses. And like, once you get to that level, it would be great to have a level of consciousness of like, okay, what am I putting out there? Waste but like responsibility. Yeah. On the way there. Babe, I got to get there. That's mm-hmm. why we got to bring back the, bring back that black nepotism. You know what I'm saying? I look at Adam Sandler and, you know, I love me some Adam Sandler, but you know, people clown him because they're like, Okay, he clearly just want to make movies with his friends, you Mm -hmm. know, because sometimes these aren't even the best people for the role. But so what? Because you're not living in the product. You're living in the process. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. When the product is already out, you want you want a different process already. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So it's like I, I can't. I'd much rather work with people that I like than. People that are like, oh, you're you're gonna do it a certain way. Like, yeah. no, I'm, I just want I want to have a good ass fucking time, bro. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And even if you're incredibly talented and you're difficult to work with, I don't want to work with you. Right. Absolutely, right. I don't want to do it because that's I'm my day to day is waking up and coming and having the displeasure yeah. of your company. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Not the displeasure. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. No. <laughs> and I would feel like that in anything I was doing. Like I would feel like that in anything. If I was like a, a boss situation, you know what I'm saying? Like if I'm in charge of who is here on day to day, I'm not doing anything. I'm not working at the bank with a bitch I don't like. Like yeah. I'm just not doing it. Like I. Yeah. Sorry. <laughs> with that, we're gonna transition to Boot Like Fabulous, a segment where we give tips and tricks on how to make it on a shoestring budget. Now. I want to talk about what tips do you have for nailing an interview? Oh, yeah. And it does it, it, any kind of interview. 
Um, it could be a pitch, nail, um, or just like a job, job. Like what? What do you have that you feel like? Okay, this is strong. I have two. When they ask you, like, okay, do you have any questions? Always ask a question. Always mm. come with questions. Prepare those in advance because this interview goes two ways. Mm-hmm. And I feel like energetically that that helps boost your confidence and your and your the way that you're being perceived in this interview of like, oh, okay, this person has a bit of self worth where they're asking me stuff instead of like, no, 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 it's okay, mm-hmm. like everything's great. Like mm-hmm. basically, you're just waiting to be chose. Mm-hmm. So having questions as well like firmly plants you as someone with leverage as well. And also like, don't be afraid to negotiate pay. Um, and if don't take a one thing like, oh, this is what it is. Okay, thank you for that. And then respectfully counter Mm -hmm. and Mm -hmm. continue to respectfully counter Mm -hmm. until you come to a place where you feel like you're being valued. Mm -hmm. I would say um, you should get really confident about being vocal about what your individual elevator pitches. Mm. Like, so essentially your 20 second, 30 second, it don't have to be long. It just needs to be clear and confident of what you do in the world, what you're interested in doing in the world, and kind of like where you want to go and how this relationship could potentially connect you to. You need to be very mm-hmm. clear on those three things and know how to say them very clearly because that obviously, even if they don't ask it like you that question in the interview, that's the point of the interview is like, okay, what do you do? Like, what is, what is, how would you define yourself in terms of uh, who you are now? Where do you want to be? And what, how is this a bridge mm. for you and for them? Mm-hmm. Um, and just, just being really clear. Well, mine ain't really business oriented at all, but um, probably the biggest thing is I listen and I figure out the places where we have common interests and where we can really shoot the shit together. Mm-hmm. And, um, you know, I'm very charming and I, I feel like when I leave, you know, one thing you know for sure is this is a person I would like to work with every day. Mm. And these are areas where in between the work, we're going to shoot the shit and get along really well. Mm-hmm. You know? Mm-hmm. Um, so I think that I always leave it with that energy of, I will have a good time with this person. Mm-hmm. I love that. Mm-hmm. Yes. Mm-hmm. And with that, uh, we are on Glamour Shoots with the Downtown Girls. I am Amemet Bayane. You can find me at Amemet Bayane. I'm Crystal Boyd. You can find me at underscore Chris Chris. I'm Chandra. You can find me at Chani. We are Unglamorous Truths. You can find us at Unglamorous Truths on all platforms. And you can listen to our podcast wherever you find yours.